Hi, so uh, I've been working with this same exact example in a bunch of videos now. The previous one, all I did was take the code for the bubble constructor function and move it to a separate tab so we can now look at it on its own. And so what I want to do in this video is figure out how do I like essentially uh, 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 handle what to do if I click on each one of those circles. Now, you have this concept, right, of events in programming, and in particular in JavaScript programming. Event is this like fundamental idea. And boy, am I going to make a, several more videos about events, in particular when I start looking at uh, other elements to the page that you might add besides the canvas, a button, a piece of text. Uh, so this is kind of like foreshadowing stuff. But right now, all you really have on your page is a canvas. Like you can't, I'm, you're drawing circles in the canvas, but the only thing registering an event is that canvas, and really the entire page. The event that it's registering is a mouse pressed event. So if you write the function mouse pressed, whatever code you put in here will automatically be executed when you click the mouse. And what you want, so this event is something that fires for the whole page. What you would like to do, I think, or what I would like to do in this particular video is attach this event essentially to each one of these circles. So this circle does something only to itself when you click on it. This circle does something only to itself when you click on it. How do you do that? So, uh, so first of all, I should say this isn't just like magic or some automatic thing like in JavaScript, whenever you say mouse pressed, things just happen when you click the mouse. No, this is a part of P5. So in the same way that P5 looks for setup and looks for draw, knowing where to start the code and knowing where to loop the code, P5 is always looking for mouse pressed behind the scenes to know what code to execute when you click the mouse. So you might have this instinct, which is like, oh, in your object, right? I have this object over here. I know. I'll add another function to the object called this.mousepressed equals function. And this is like a lovely idea. I love that thinking of yours that I'm sure you had in your head. Uh, it makes sort of sense. Like this is the function that gets triggered when you click the mouse on this object. The issue is there's nobody knows what this object is or how big it is or what you want to do when you click on it or how you check if you click on it. That's on you. You made this object. So this nothing inside the object can happen automatically. It's up to you to trigger this function in the object yourself when you want to do so. And the only way to do that is by triggering a function in the object in mouse pressed itself. So I'm going to write some code in here to kind of illustrate this a bit more. So down here in draw, you can see this is the code for doing something to every object. I want to move every object and display every object. For every bubble, move and display it. So in mouse pressed, what I want to do is something similar. I also want to say, do something to every single bubble. When I click the mouse in the canvas, do something to every single bubble. What is it that I want to do? Check to see if the mouse is inside the bubble, if the mouse is inside the bubble, do something to the bubble, that type of thing. So the question is, what do I type there? Well, in this case, I started with this idea of, oh, I'll call the function mouse pressed in the object. And while that does make a certain amount of sense, I think it's a little bit tricky and dangerous to do that because mouse pressed is this special P5 word, right? P5 setup is special, draw is special, mouse pressed is special. So while of course you could name it mouse pressed inside the object, I want to emphasize that this is now no longer part of P5. This is something that I'm adding to the object itself. So I'm going to call this function a uh, clicked. <laughs> You know, whatever. You come up with a better name. But so I'm writing a new, again, this is my name that I made up. I could call that function porcupine if I like. It just doesn't matter. That doesn't really make any sense. Although I do, you know, porcupines are, I think they're a nice animal. They're very spiky and you might get hurt, but you, why should we be against porcupines? I am for porcupines. <laughs> I'd like that statement be known. The point is though, uh, clicked sounds like, oh, I'm supposed to call it clicked. It, you're not supposed to, but it makes sense for right now. So this.clicked is a function. So that function is a new function in the object. So in the sketch code, what do I want to do when I click the mouse on the page? When I click the mouse on the page, I want to call the clicked function for every bubble. So I'm passing that event to the bubbles. Mouse press is the event that, the, that P5 gets automatically that happens for you. So this is now what I'm going to do is take that event and trigger something in all the objects. So here I go, bubbles index i dot 
clicked. Now let's think about what should I do in that object. So one thing that I could do kind of quickly, like I need to add some code here. One thing I could do kind of quickly is just change the color of the object. So, uh, so here's a question for you. If the color changes, what do I need to change the color? Well, as you see here in fill, um, the, the, the color is hard coded. It's always white with a little bit of alpha. So if that color should change, I need a variable. And that color has to be variable. It has to change. So I'm going to add to the object another variable. I'm going to call it col for color. And it can start as that white color. And I'll say fill color. Call instead of color. Color is, again, another keyword part of P5. Oh, 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 I made the classic error, right? I cannot help but make this error constantly over and over again. This.color, this.call is the variable part of this object, this bubble object. So what do I need to say there? This.col. So if you get that error, a variable is not defined inside an object, it's probably because you forgot the this dot. So I'm going to say this dot. And now I can see, look, there we go. I have my white circles. When they're clicked, then the color should change. What should it change to? I don't know. I like purple. Purple's my favorite color. I think <laughs> this is going to be purple. Uh, so I'm going to make them purple. So now, right, what happens? What happened? The sketch is running. All the circles are being drawn with this particular white color. When I click the mouse, this code is triggered. Call that click function on all of the bubbles. And all of the bubbles, their color will now be set to purple. There we go. Ah, it's more pink. Whatever. Ah, it looks kind of purple on this screen. I got lots of screens all over the place and like surrounded by screens. It's a little weird. But OK, so uh, I'm, getting, I, I'm getting off the topic here. So uh, I kind of got somewhere, right? I did pass an event. Like anywhere I, you know, I could run this again and again. Anywhere I click, you know, all of those, all of them are going to turn purple. That's not what I want. I want only the one that I click on to change color. How do I do that? Well, first of all, why is this happening? I've done no checking to see where the mouse is relative to those objects. Right? All I did was call the function, clicked on all of them, and immediately set all of them to that color. So what I need to do is do some sort of checking. So how do I know if you've clicked on something? So let's come, I think we need a diagram for this. Um, I think I've probably drawn this diagram in another video, uh, but might as well do it again since it's relevant right here. Uh, this is a circle. This is the center of the circle. You can consider its location x, y. This is the radius of a circle. That's the half of the diameter. And let's say this is where I click the mouse, right here. So one, the piece of information that I need is I need to know how far away from the center of the circle did I click the mouse. This is mouse x, mouse y. How far from x, y to mouse x, mouse y? What's that value? What's that distance? for D. And um, I really need a new marker, which I'll get for the next video. But um, how do I compute that? Well, I'll tell you. You could use this thing called the Pythagorean theorem, and you could subtract the x's from the y's and square some things and do the square root. I'd love to talk about that. I love the Pythagorean theorem. It's, my, it's one of my, my, my top 10, I don't know, 5. I'm not sure where it is in the top. But um, the, uh, I forgot what I was saying. So the point of this here is that you could do all of that, but P5 has a nice function for you built in. I just got to get that new pen now. I, I have never leave home without an entire box of whiteboard markers. <laughs> if you're me and you like to write on, write on a whiteboard. Okay. Oh, so much better. Okay. Var D equals the distance between X comma Y mouse X mouse Y. So you can use this function built into five, P5 called distance, which will give you the distance between those two points. And guess what? If that distance is greater than the radius, you're outside the circle. If that distance is less than the radius, you're inside the circle. So you've clicked on the circle if D is less than R. So only if that distance is less than the radius do I want to change the color. So we can come back here and add that to this program. Right? First, I want to get that distance between mouse x mouse y. And what am I about to forget? I'm about to say this dot x, this dot y, uh, this dot x, this dot y. And I will give myself a little more space here. Uh, and I want to say if the distance is less than the radius. So what's the radius for these circles? Well, you can see that I'm drawing them at 48. 
48 being its diameter, its width, its height. So half of that would be 24. If distance is less than 24, then change the color. So here we go. And now I can click here. Look, I'm clicking around here. Nothing's changing. Come over here. Click on this circle. Pink, purple, pink, purple, right? There we go, I'm moving the mouse very slowly and clicking. I could do all these. So each one of these is changing color. Now, there's a couple improvements that I would suggest making to this, but I will leave that for you if you're kind of following along and trying to do some exercises with this. Um, one is that I would not leave this as 24 and 48. I mean, it makes sense at this point that you have a variable to describe the size of your circles. So this dot diameter, this dot radius, whatever you want to call it or think about it, I would add that to your code and use use the variable here and use the variable here. Other thing you might think about as a little bit of a tricky problem is right now they're all the exactly the same color. So every time you click on it you could get a random color or each one could be a specific color or how about it changes its shape from a circle to a square, you know, what else? It grows, it shrinks. What else could you do for when you click on it? They don't move, they stop moving when you click on it. Try to think of some other feature besides just changing the color and, and try to add that. So hopefully this gives you a sense of if you know all that P5 is giving you is the moment you click on the canvas and all that you know is that you clicked on the canvas and you know where you clicked on the canvas but those objects are your own so if you want to figure out if the objects were clicked on it's up to you to write your own code inside the object to make that determination now later when we use some other elements on the page like buttons or sliders or other kind of DOM elements what's DOM I don't know you know DOM is that a person my friend named DOM <laughs> we're really not friends I mean, I don't want to be mean or anything, but the Dom, no, no, Dom, this is a, a he, she, I don't know, it, whatever. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm losing my mind here. So uh, the point is, you're, there's going to be other ways you're going to see that we can attach events to specific items on the page, which is a little bit different to how we're kind of in our code attaching events to these things in the canvas. Okay, I was really forcing the jokes in this video. I got to just let them flow more naturally. <laughs> Not that these videos are supposed to have jokes. That's like... <sighs> okay, um, goodbye. I'm going to see you in the next. This was 12 minutes long, which is two minutes too long because I rambled about somebody named Dom, which really doesn't make any sense. Okay, talk to you later.